Okay, now it's been recording. Mm. Who wants to present first? Uh, there are two. One is, which was really deep uh, last week. That is 28. Ilakshi or Ilakshi and uh, Viratunga. Uh, okay, so I can do. Okay, sure. Please start. Wait a minute, I'll just give you the screen sharing facility. Now, can you share the screen? I have given it now. Yes. Can I start, sir? Yeah, please. Uh, good morning, sir, and my dear colleagues. For the today's presentation, I have selected the analysis of related party transaction of Nailstock of PLC. So before moving to the company analysis, I would like to define some definition which are relevant to this topic. Uh, first one is what is the related party transaction? Related party transaction is a transfer of resources, services or obligation between the reporting entity and the related party, regardless of the price charge. So other one is a reporting entity, the entity that is preparing financial statements and other one is related party a person or an entity that is related to the reporting entity can be identified as related party it can be a, a person or a class uh, or a class member close member of that person's family is related to the reporting entity as a subsidiary associate or joint venture so now I am moving to the company analysis of Melstaco PLC. Melstaco PLC is a diversified conglomerate which presents in every sector critical to the economy. So they involve with many sectors like beverages, plantation, insurance, telecommunication, information technology, power generation, leisure, servicing, BPO solution, and business solution, media, hospitals, laboratory services, and pharmaceutical. So when considering some of group companies, uh, it can be identified as Distributors Company of Sri Lanka, Madolsima Plantation, Balangudu Plantation, Melsta Technologies, Melsta Laboratories, Pharmaceutical, Melsta Hospitals, Ragama Hospital Management, Melsta, Melsta Properties, Towers, Health, Continental Insurance, Bell Vantage, Splendor Media, Bell Solution. Likewise, there are so many companies under their control. So now I'm moving to the... Uh, Related party uh, transactions related to the Nailstock of PLC, uh, we can identify that there are uh, uh, transactions like dividend receivables, rent income, supply of goods and services, reimbursement of expenses, and loans and interest on loans. So now I'm moving to the some analysis based on the uh, fine uh, based on the financial statement information. So uh, first I'm moving to the, uh, this Excel, uh, which shows the information uh, I get, through, get from the financial statements of last three years. So first one is dividend income. Uh, when analyzing the revenue of the Melstaco PLC, its gross revenues comes from the rent income as its operation income. And dividend income can be identified as its other operating income. However, when comparing those two incomes, other operating income is greater than its operating income. It means this dividend income is greater than its rent income. So reason for that is as a parent company, it maintained many quoted and unquoted companies and almost all the companies operated under the profit and the earned dividends based on those profits. So now I'm moving to do some uh, data analysis. So 
I chose some two group companies like it Conspens PLC and this Risk Company of Sri Lanka. So when considering last three years, uh, when considering the eight Conspens PLC, there is a reduction of dividend per share. So reason for that is with this COVID pandemic and all, uh, their dividend per share decrease. So uh, then the other company, this is a uh, company, this Risk Company of Sri Lanka, uh, ownership is 92%. And when considering it, it can be seen there's a fluctuation of a dividend income. So this is a special case because in 2019, uh, in 2018 and 19, they declare one sp dividends for once per year, but in 19, 20 and 20 to 21, they declare dividend twice a year. So reason for that is previous, uh, previously, prior to, uh, Melstock under the control of Melstock of PLC, this is company of Sri Lanka is under the control of Sri Lanka government. And still there is a possibility of a uh, takeover by the government. So in case management always try to, uh, without retaining re, uh, retain earnings within the DCSL company, obtain those earnings to Melstock of CLC. So in that reason, they divide twice a year, they divide the dividends twice a year. So in case with that reason, uh, dividend declare, dividends earning is higher when compared to the 18, 19 and 19, 20. And there's a small reduction when, when compared to these two years, 20 to 21 and 90 to 20. So reason for that is with the COVID pandemics, their operation may discontinued within the two, three months and with that is the reason for this reduction. However, uh, as a whole, they earn in large profit. And with that, uh, Melstock or PLC can uh, uh, receive huge amount of dividend uh, because it has 92% of uh, ownership. So uh, one of other long-term investment is Lanka Mill Food PLC. It's also one of a um, major company when considering the related party transactions. When considering the dividend income throughout the last three years, it can be identified that dividend income increase 100 percent when compared to the 1819 to 1922 2021. So these companies, as unquoted companies, it means ownership is under the uh, Melstock of PLC like Belvantage, Bobo Power, Continental Insurance. Melster Technologies, Melster Properties, Melster Towers and Petty Seals. All these companies are under the control of 100% ownership under the uh, Melster Corp PLC. And based on the management dividend decisions, they div uh, divide a dividend declaration may change year by year. So some years they earn, uh, some years they earn uh, profit uh, based on their profit as well as other management decision. They decide whether to uh, declare dividend or not so that's why this shows some uh, some years they earn higher dividend and some years they have a lower dividend when compared to the other years and some years they do not declare dividend this is based on the management dividend so as a main part uh, this is about the uh, summary of the dividend income according to the financial statement information so now i am moving to the rent income uh, this is the main operating income of the Melstock or PLC. It provides main, uh, many premises for their related companies and charge rent for those premises. So through the agreement, these amounts may vary uh, and many other management decisions, uh, the amounts may vary. However, whole, as a whole, uh, group company get the advantage of charging lower rate of rent, ex, uh, lower rate of rent. So rent income may expense may reduce to the other companies because a uh, parent company provide the premises to as their rent income so these uh, I, here it can be identified that few premises according to the financial statement information information they provide uh, so based normally based on the agreements these amounts may vary so now I move into the service rendered by the uh, service rendered by the other subsidiary companies to Melstock of PLC. Uh, as a diversified conglomerate, they have several companies under their control, and because of that, they have the privilege of obtaining the services from those companies and uh, charge lower uh, 
lower rate in case of these expenses so likewise it can spend printing and packaging provide printing services for mail stock of plc it can spend travels and ship, shipping provide traveling it's uh, traveling uh for Melster Corp PLC and Formula World, Melster Logistic provide vehicles and vehicle repairs and all those things. And Melster Technologies and Bell Solution, as IT related company, they provide software services and IT equipment. Bell Vantage uh, PLC, uh, Private Limited, as a BPO and business solution company, they provide data entry and scanning services. Continental Insurance provide insurance as well as laboratories, hospital management provide uh, medical consumables and other related laboratory services. Lanka Bills provide uh, telecommunication services, as well as Splendor Media Private Limited provide the advertising expenses. Likewise, advantage of uh, having a subsidiary, lot of subsidiary companies, they can uh, get the services under the low cost and uh, low cost, uh, lower rate under the lower rate and uh, coordination of activities little bit easier because most of the management personalities are similar when compared to the each company so other the other one of main criteria is reimbursement of expenses so when considering the reimbursement of expenses uh, payment for some expenses with relevant to the mail stock of plc bared by the other companies and in case for that, they have to pay for the, those companies. This may happen vice versa. That means sometimes Melstock or PLC bear some expense with, with regard to the other group companies and also other group companies bear expenses with relevant to the Melstock or PLC in case both two parties have to settle those amounts at the end. So uh, especially these payment can be identified as security expenses, Bought and electricity, bought and electricity and uh, consumables, administration expenses. Likewise, these expenses may be reimbursement by the each company. This may happen most of the cases. Uh, those rent premises when we provide rent premises and sometimes payment for electricity and water security and those rent rent premises paid by the uh, uh, rent uh, rent company company which get the premises so in case may re uh, reimbursement of that expenses should be done by the melstock of plc likewise this kind of reimbursement expenses can be identified within the uh, group so other one of important parties loan and interest so uh, this loan and interest in here it shows the loan granted and received by the melstock of plc According to the company policy, Melstock of PLC entered into the other related companies based uh, with, through the agree, agreements based on their fund requirements. It can be short terms or long term fund requirement. Melstock of PLC provide the loan as well as receive the loan from the group companies. So interest charge for these uh, loans may based on the monthly uh, based on monthly interest income based on the AWPLR plus one on average balance outstanding. So AWPLR means average weighted prime lending rate. It complied weekly by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka based on the information provided by the commercial bank regarding the lending rate. So this uh, loan provided by the uh, group companies is also one of uh, advantage for the organization because you know, they can get the loans under minimum rate and easily get the loans from group companies uh, when compared to the getting loan from a bank or somewhere else. So other one is uh, one of another uh, main part, uh, main related part transaction is transaction with key management person. So key management personnel means persons who have authority and responsibility for planning, controlling, and directing the activities of the entity directly or indirectly, including many directors of that entity. So according to the financial statements, they shows that there is a no any loan granted by the company to directors other than the short-term benefits. Short-term benefits means uh, salaries, bonuses, insurance claims, and et cetera. So uh, this information showed that uh, 
year by year there are some reduction and this this may vary because it's a uh, short term benefits may change year by year we cannot identify same scenario up and there is a up and downs fluctuations because direct these things relevant to the directors so uh, this is regard to the related party transaction uh, and this is on mail stack of plc and thank you very much for leading into my presentation okay um Lakshay, thank you very much for the Thanks. presentation by providing details of these things so your topic um, um, selected is um, a good in terms of financial statement analysis because um, the implications arising from related party transactions are immense. Uh, we can talk about all those things. Uh, before asking some questions, I would like um, to give the opportunity for others to ask questions or comments or give their views. Do others have anything to clarify? Hello. Yeah, it's your time now. So even at any time you, you can ask questions, but I'll, I would like to give you the opportunity to first to ask questions. Right. <clears throat> Then I will start, um, not really asking question, but it's a kind of discussion. Um, I encourage you to take part in the discussion. Um, first thing, um, can you just explain why are related parties or related transactions? So you gave, um, explanations about related party, definition and the details of related parties. And it shows that there are many related parties. Why are related party transactions so important for the readers or the users of financial statement? Because here we are, our subject is financial statement analysis. So we have a deal with information why are these information um, important for us? Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, when considering the Melstock or PLC, if someone considering the, if someone uh, go through the PNL, uh, they can identify that uh, their operating income may reduce when compared to the other operating income. It's one, one thing. So they can move to the, those notes and identify that they earn huge prof, uh, amount of uh, other operating incomes through dividend income. So having idea about the related party transaction is important to uh, readers to get the idea about whether these companies ability to uh, go through with the uh, country situation because because then when compared to the Melstock or PLC, there is rent income, rent income is the main operating income. However, operating income is lower, but other operating income is when compared to the uh, in higher amount. So in that way, I'll go through the uh, related party transaction information. They can identify that uh, how the things go uh, related with the other group companies as, as this is a, diversified conglomerate when investing most of the people consider about the other companies as well so basically when investing in Melstock or plc most of the people consider about the distilleries company of sri lanka because it's as it it's it's also one of the main uh, profit turning company likewise uh, through the, go through the related party transaction note they can get a better idea about how the uh, earnings come from and all?
right mm. okay of course uh, there is a use and there is an importance of providing this thing as you highlighted and explained for the purpose of analyzing um, financial statements, analyzing information, and for better decision-making by the users in many ways, as we explained. Um, even the rest, the others also can answer. Other than this objective purpose, that is the use of information for analysis purposes, are there any other reasons other than this uh, for the accounting profession to be very serious about related party transactions? Uh, so you ask from the company and uh, readers in? Uh, from anyone's um, uh, the perspective, as a society, like because the companies are operating in a given economy in our society, like in other countries as well. Uh, company is a legal person. Of course, legal person carries out transactions. And again, as we just explained, yes, so giving or providing all those details enable the readers and users of financial statements. But apart from that, are there any other reason why, why have professionals or so accounting um, professional organizations such as CA Sri Lanka or accounting standard pronouncing bodies and other professional organizations, legal authorities, or who, who are in the uh, field of finance or businesses? should worry about related party transactions. Are there any other reasons other than that? So is that the sole purpose of uh, providing information to take better decisions? Or are there, or in, in, in a way, finally it is, it's connected to decision-making, of course. Are there any other specific reasons other than um, giving more details about these related parties? Uh, yes, yeah, so sometimes that uh, the this uh, through the related party transaction, uh, we can identify the nature of the relationship uh, entities involved with some uh, uh, description. Uh, I mean, uh, sometimes which are not relevant to the amounts, no amounts with related to the financial statements, but the nature of the uh, relationship may affect to the uh, financial statements. Sometimes when the uh, when changing the nature of a subsidiary company may impact to the mother company. Likewise, uh, it's also can be identified as a, a basic thing for having knowledge about a related party transaction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Okay, however, I'll just um, give you some other uh, different dimension aspects where you guys have to think about these related party transactions so from different perspectives, mainly um, from the analysis, first analysis, not only the number or this segmental information. Um, I just told you when it comes to financial statement analysis for master's level, uh, we, we need to think from highly critical perspective, critical perspective. So therefore, uh, related party transactions, we should raise um, questions about their implications, their implications. Uh, one of the implications, yes, what you explain is an implication. So without which it would be very difficult for us to um, get a, Clear idea or analysis would be really would carry lots of um, flows. The other important implications from social point of view and just point of view is number one is the tax implications. Tax implication. So if you go to um, uh, now, everyone uh, remember it. Uh, this company has a large number of uh, group has large number of companies within this. 
um, the first question we should ask, does this particular group need so many different companies to carry out intended economic operations by this particular group in that manner, or efficient manner, or creating value, adding value to the society? Does really or genuinely the group need this many number of companies? That is the question number one we need to ask and discuss in detail. So we, we can talk about that later. So coming back to this um, implications, number one implication is tax implications. You know that, uh, um, that, that that is where the understanding or the knowledge about the society in which we live in is important to understand other things because it puts the basic the premise for us to understand. So what kind of society in which we live in, we like, whether we like it or not, we live in a society where the individual utility is highly promoted. Then companies get lots of opportunities of creating value there, creating value there. So economic engagement, activities of an entity are simply economic engagement, either in, I mean, in different forms. These economic engagements create value, create value in the value creation. So that finally, that really adds to the GDP of this country. So when this value is created, there is a likelihood and the possibility that the government would take reasonable amount of, actually should government should take reasonable amount of tax in just and fair manner to run the state apparatus and to provide basic requests. So lots of objectives and the reasons are there for the government collect tax. So taxation is a reality. But when different um, stakeholders like government, individuals, companies, other organizations, especially business organizations. Of course, business organizations are, I just explain you, uh, fictitious because there is no physical person. At the end, if, if you um, uh, detail and go into the detail of the analysis, who can be seen at the end of the all those analyses? Only individuals only individuals, right? Even though we talk about governments, though we talk about companies or any other organization or any other things, finally, what we really see are individuals. What we really see are individuals. But those individuals operate in different ways at different places. So now you can link, because I'm just telling you a very broad, uh, um, like kind of in a way, not complex, but uh, very broad um, stance and the analysis. Thereby, if you are promoted and motivated to maximize your own utility, simply disregarding the social coherence and the coexistence of the society, what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to maximize your own wealth then should you pay more taxes? Because when the government comes to tax you, you perceive logically the government as a bad guy, because the government is coming to collect taxes from you. So that you take lots of measures to evade taxation. So that is the very critical, the number one implication of uh, related party transactions. That is the main reason why uh, related party transactions have been made uh, compulsory to be disclosed apart from the other two. Basically, there are uh, um, apparent uh, reasons um, uh, tasks. So the real uh, motives and objectives would be sometimes hidden. Uh, sometimes even though uh, that's the, they, they do not come on to the discussion platform. Uh, it, there is a possibility that uh, simply these kind of things would uh, um, uh, slide away uh, from the main discussion. So therefore here, 
major implication. Actually, we do not know up to what extent the tax ha- uh, taxation has been evaded or tax. I mean, this information has been used to plan taxation. That has to be done as a separate study because we you can't uh, say categorically that companies have or the companies within this mill stock or um, have evaded taxation because we don't have that information by looking at the at related party transactions. But the implication of related party transaction is that there is a great possibility and risk that the companies, individual companies, or as a group, but finally in terms of individuals, because they are the physically seen people, individuals would tend to evade taxation. So that, that is a key point. So which was missing in the presentation. Is that clear to you guys? Yes, sir. All right. So that is the number one implication. So do, do you have anything to add on? So have you come across, um, so you work um, in the group in case, uh, no matter if you can explain it, no matter whether it is a confidential or company related information, but we discussed these things um, for the purpose of uh, learning only. Therefore, you can be free and say, so do you have any information that uh, there is high risk within your group uh, that the tax is evaded? Because you know that actually this question is connected to the other question also. Why does the group own so many different companies? Because if you just carefully look at this particular list, those individual companies are not liable to taxation at the same rate, different tax rates based on different operations. Even within um, the same company, tax rates vary according to business segments. So that's another complication and the complexity seen in our inland revenue um, law. However, uh, that, that, that's a reality. Then, um, the possibility is there um, to um, plan in a way they, they call, of course, tax planning is different from evasion, but planning is done by professionals. Of course, professionals are the guys who um, help facilitate um, tax evasion as well. So however, tax evasion is possible. Finally, why is this tax evasion um, important or is like uh, the creeps is created um, some uh, issues um, the the wealth of individuals as i just told you at the end who owns all those businesses are individuals their wealth is there so how best their individual wealth can be maximized and the uh, uh, Wealth can be simply transferred um, and moved within the group to achieve that particular objective. What we call, uh, there is a concept, if you are interested in, you can learn transfer pricing technique. Transfer pricing. Have you learned about transfer pricing? Have you learned about transfer pricing? in other subjects? Yes or no? Yes, a little bit. Okay, how about others? Have you learned about transfer pricing? No, sir, we haven't. Hmm? We haven't learned about this. Okay, how about others? Those who come from accounting, finance, and business backgrounds, or maybe now you work, uh, you, you have some practical exposure as well. Um, sometimes you may have heard not, but I, I know that unless we discuss from um, uh, analytical point of view, we, we, I mean, we, we do not understand what it is, why is it important, and what are the implications of all those things? Actually, 
related parties are connected to this transfer pricing technique as well. Um, th that is where we are supposed to discuss in financial statement analysis subject. Uh, transfer pricing can be seen in uh, on two platforms. Number one is within different sections of an organization, different section of an organization, or maybe among organizations companies as well. Whenever we have a kind of integration or the value chain, for the simplicity, I will take a small like individual company. Individual company assume that this company engages in manufacturing garments manufacturing and exported to different countries so many countries so that um, the the production process is normally organized into different functions designing cutting sewing like machining uh, maybe washing packaging like so likewise you you may name there would be so many different um, functions or tasks um, so that uh, the, the, those tasks are uh, managed through different sections, managers, and their performance would be measured uh, based on the value created by that particular function. Then the cost would be one of the key um, dimension or the element to be considered. But how are you going to, like, in case some benefits uh, or any allowances or any other financial rewards are required to be given, you need to measure the performance of each section, functions, or profitability centers. So you may name that there are so many different ways of organizing things within an organ in an entity. However, whenever you have this kind of functional um, operations, uh, operations, there is a likelihood that each function would try to get more value or report more value within um, uh, its functional area, why they want to show high performance. Um, but if you create more value at the expense of other units, and when the performance of other units are measured, other parties would be deprived. As a result, see this trans pricing has been introduced, we better price the products uh, when they move within the organization from one section to the other or from one responsibility center to the other, we better use a particular uh, pricing technique. That is not the price to be quoted to outside organization. I mean, I mean ultimate customer or outside organization. Within the entity, among different sections, you need to um, price your product, your value addition in such a manner which is agreeable, would be democratic. Likewise, you, you, you have to think of. So there is no harm of doing this thing. If you your managers are capable of doing it in a very democratic manner, just manner, of course, you can expect high productivity. If you can't do this thing, even within organization, lots of problems um, can create, whereby some sections uh, may dominate others, and lots of benefits would be given to selected sections at the expense of others. Likewise, lots of management issues may also be created. That is something else. I just explain you about that part of the related part, sorry, um, transfer pricing for your knowledge. You, you better learn it. So, so being managers, you must have a very good idea about this transfer pricing technique at managerial level. The second level, second operative level is the critical one, questionable one, when this technique is used to evade taxation, evade taxation by companies. Because now companies operate in different jurisdictions in a globalized economy. So throughout the world. Hmm? So we are by that tax rates are different from one jurisdiction to uh, uh, in other jurisdictions, like in the case of different segments. Even so when different segments are taxed at different rates, again, this transfer pricing would be used as a technique to evade taxation. When different tax rates are there or applicable at different jurisdictions, organizations tend to do this thing. 
transfer price. So where they try to accumulate a maze, huge wealth and profits in uh, jurisdictions or countries where low taxation or where their ultimate shareholder owner lives, they transfer it. Tax purposes and wealth amazing uh, purposes. By using famous under invoicing and over invoicing techniques, you better search for these two things. How companies use these transfer pricing techniques through under invoicing and over invoicing. So that is a related party transaction. It has become a common practice. So that is where we should openly discuss. Sometimes governments may take um, steps to manage it. Sometimes governments may support them and take some benefits, um, uh, so underhand benefits in terms of commission, bribes, or any other things. So Sri Lanka is a paradise for this transfer pricing technique uh, for uh, between companies. That is the reason why if someone is interested in doing a research, you will take all the BOI companies um, which exports goods for services to I mean, export goods for services under BOI Act or within those legislations or whatever. If you do a careful analysis, especially the garment industry, I do not know the situation about the IT industry and I do not have information. I have not, I, I just want to collect some information about those companies as well. But I have some information about these garment factories. The garment factories, if you do a careful analysis, all those garment factories are running at a loss all the time, running at a loss. Or there is no profit or loss. Over 30 years, 40 years, more than 25 years. It's a miracle for a company to survive where there is no adequate profit. How do they survive? Actually, it is not that they do not earn profits. They earn profits. All the profits are transferred to their favorable destinies through these transfer pricing techniques, whereby both overpricing and underpricing of invoicing is used. It's very public secret, right? I don't know whether you, you guys have exposure to this. Better think of, this is the learning, okay? So that could be the reason why uh, even last, not even the last budget, even the budget before last, or there is a discussion. Maybe just before the budget, there was a discussion about the new rules and regulation about transfer pricing. So how uh, could the government uh, detect these things and collect more taxation? I, I haven't gone through it. Uh, you better study what proposals have been made by the government about new transfer pricing um, techniques and tax on transfer pricing. Okay. Yeah. So in our company, sometimes- what, what, what's, uh, that, what, what's that company? Uh, Printian. Sorry? Printian. Okay. So they uh, moved the inventory or spare part to the other's company with uh, adding 5% of uh, uh, value. Mm -hmm. So is it like that? Yeah, in a way, like, so maybe a normal percentage that is what without checking the rates and why is it added and all those things we can't say. Yes, that is a transfer pricing, but why do you do this particular transfer pricing? Is it because of just to um, manage the businesses in a proper way or to evade taxation has to be uh, anal like investigated. By simply looking at this, we can't say. So is it added or like, um, where does it uh, uh, transfer goods? Print care, who owns this print care? Uh, so there are uh, seven subsidiary companies in print care. Oh, within so print care, they, print uh, care, they are a subsidiary, so okay. Yeah. So and who uh, owns print care? Who owns print care? Uh, so, uh, there is a lot of shareholders. Uh. So and, are they foreigners or local? I don't have any idea. Uh, both, uh, there are both. Sir. Who are the significant shareholders? Foreign? Is there a uh, significant foreign st state? Not Sri Lanka. All are Sri Lankan? A uh, lot of are Sri Lankan. Sorry? 
lot of people are sri lankan uh, that means so uh, significant amount is held by uh, sri lankan then yeah. the um, related party transaction or the transfer pricing may be used to uh, transfer wealth and value to ultimate company this in this case it looks like ultimate company is primca so then through primca the shareholders would be benefited so that is where you need to do the analysis um, again uh, you you can link this idea to another analysis that is called stakeholder sorry shareholder analysis if you do a very good shareholder analysis we can find it hmm. Uh, if someone is interested in, uh, you can do this uh, shareholder analysis in Sri Lanka, but it should be very objective one to bring about this. Right. A any other thing that you want to ask about this um, related party, oh, sorry, implication uh, of this thing in relation to taxation? So why the uh, government charge uh... Difference kind of taxes for the industry. Okay. Anyway, so like that is a little bit like outside of our discussion for the today's discussion. But anyway, for your benefit, now it has a relation, like it has a connection, because the reason budget has proposed different tax and all those things. So this cannot be discussed without understanding uh, the the purposes of a budget, uh, government budget. Uh, the purpose of a government, the, 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 I mean, the government budget has many purposes. Among them is to stabilize the economy, stabilize the economy, and uh, promote economic growth while ensuring um, the fair income distribution. Being the main um, state apparatus, the government needs to have some revenue. From where does it get it? Mainly from taxation. When a government taxes on persons, we know that the wealth, in, uh, especially in this kind of society, in any society, so wealth is accumulated or income is accumulated in individuals at different rates. So that one of the fundamental and the very basic, what we call fundamental principles of taxation is to do it in a just and fair manner. So they look at individuals and corporations. So individuals earning, of course, vary at the end where you can tax high amounts on individuals, those who earn high amounts, individuals. I'm referring to individuals, that's fair. That is income taxation. Even for that, so that, that is why so different rates can be introduced. Uh, that is what we call progressive tax rates. Higher the income, higher the rate. Uh, smaller the income, lower the rate likewise. Uh, in some countries, you know, may not believe when you reach certain level of your individual earnings, government takes more than 50%, sometimes 70, 80%, just to simply discourage individuals to go in the race of income or income amazing uh, uh, actions. Why? That is so dangerous for the mankind because you always keep on, like you are engaged in earning, 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 you don't have any other life or any other time to enjoy your life, even with the money that you have earned. <laughs> so therefore high tax rate. So it's socially progressive. So high, high income, high tax. That is for individual. Uh, there's no pro pro the problem of having um, high tax rate. So now you understand the purpose of imposing different tax rates on income uh, on individuals. But when it comes to indirect taxation, indirect taxation, such as a GST, NTB, or whatever the things which are added on to um, goods and services. Actually, you government generally, I mean, a good government is not supposed to have 
so many different tax rates, different taxes. It really creates unnecessary confusion and uh, 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 conflicts. So that is what we are experiencing in Sri Lanka. There are so many indirect taxation where individuals who pay all those tax, taxes do not know that they are paying taxes. Good example is you take your um, telephone bill, hmm? mobile telephone bill, and read it. So many different taxes. Are there. You do not understand how and why these things are imposed. Sometimes there are taxes on taxes. So those things are totally against the basic principles of taxation. So that is bad governance. Then the, I turn it to the other side, the, in the, the companies. Companies also um, are taxed directly and indirectly, even when it comes to indirect taxation, no matter whether it is individuals who are like corporations, goods and services to, should be taxed with a selected number of, I mean, the tax uh, taxes and should not be many. It should be one or two. Then that is very simple. But when it comes to income tax for companies, because a company is a legal person, it is not an individual. Limited liability company is a, a, a legal person. That legal person collectively earns profit. So therefore, um, individuals, not sorry, um, the individual companies being a legal person earn different income. Therefore, their, their income tax rates also should vary, but not with that much complexities. Um, but there is an argument that since companies generate uh, economic value, create more economic value, they should not be taxed. So that argument comes from them, but that's not fair. So actually they should be taxed when the company earns lots of profit, the government has the opportunity to uh, uh, get more taxes, even with the same rate. But just to answer to your question, why does the government have different tax rates for companies? Maybe two reasons. One is to inefficiency and uh, complexity and the problems in the tax regimes or whereby by using these complex, uh, whenever you have kept your um, uh, tax system complex, that opens um, lots of uh, doors and opportunities for corruption, even for officials uh, and uh, the politicians. So complication leads high corruption. So that, that is one reason. I mean, uh, the negative uh, side of uh, having many income tax rates. I do not know whether the government has introduced so many different types for this purpose. Or the other positive uh, reason is, of course, when we create value in the economy, companies engage in different industries, different segments of which some of the areas should be highly promoted, protected um, and encouraged. And whereas some industries should be discouraged. And um, for example, when it comes to, you need to think of entertainment businesses or any other um, businesses which create um, uh, national and uh, natural, again, health consequences. Of course, you, 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 you are not supposed to promote being a government. Then- Liquor and cigarettes, sir. Hello? Liquor and cigarettes also, they impose. Because, yeah, they impose lots of taxes because they, they, I mean, the yeah. objective, uh, yeah, theoretical objective is to discourage, but the governments are very careful of imposing taxes in such a manner to gain lots of revenue for the government and not to discourage. If the government knows discourage, government can impose very, very high taxes that contradicts uh, its uh, demand elasticity, hmm? elasticity of demand, but they take into account the elasticity of demand and adjust the tax rate accordingly. So then you can ask the question, why doesn't the government now, government needs lots of money? Why can't the government impose uh, maybe 500% tax on cigarettes, liquor and all, if they really want to discourage them. No, they, 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 if, they, if they do that, so the, the demand, um, I mean, government will not be able to uh, gain the expected tax. Of course, business would be there, but the government objective is to collect more taxes. 
anyway so that, that, that's something else so what i'm just telling you about this the the uh, the better side of having different tax rates just to promote take care discourage encourage uh, different sections of the economy from a long term economic planning perspective long term economic growth perspective of course there is no problem of having different tax rates but it should be very clear very clear uh, it should not be complex and confusing uh, as of now in sri lankan context the tax uh, policies tax rules rates and all those things even very, you, you need hours and hours to understand it is very complex thereby you can interpret in the way that you want even if you take um, uh, this uh, one time um, lump sum tax of 25% you, you you may interpret differently in the future for sure then again 2.5 tax on turnover may be interpreted differently um, so i i hope i just gave you a little bit more detail about taxation but if i just summarize it tax policies should be just and fair and very simple if you make it complex unnecessarily it creates lots of rooms and avenues for corruption and um, frauds so that, that that's the same is it all right yes sir yes. okay now the other um, implication important one that um, ilakshi just missed um, actually that's connected to this um, tax implication through that wealth transfer is the other implication wealth transfer wealth is created in individual companies individual companies are owned by who individuals and corporations you got it i think i i have already explained enough the concept i mean the structure of a limited liability company limited liability company is a legal person like you and me without having a physical substance but that is a fictitious since there is no physical substance ultimate benefits or whatever the resources wealth generated within a company is entitled by individual shareholders so within huge group structure who is who are the ultimate shareholders that is what uh, ilakshi um, yeah, do you have any idea about um, the ultimate shareholders of this group who are the ultimate shareholders Uh, actually, sir, uh, when comparing the uh, all the companies, uh, Melstar Corp PLC earn uh, a uh, higher percentage of shares in most mm. of the companies, mm. uh, and other shares are uh, owned by uh, chairman and personally chairman and some other personal people. Mm -hmm. Right. so it 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 um, reveals that the ultimate holding company is the mels uh, melstarco and melstarco um, has a significant stake in almost of all those companies so therefore the wealth ultimate wealth is tied up in melstarco but if you just look at the even other individual companies and the melstarco if you just go down to or if you investigate to find out who really which individuals own melstarco and other companies you need to go to the uh, largest shareholder list if it's a, a public quoted company you can access to that list but if it's a, a private company you can't access to this unless you get the permission from the company's registrar to get it so that's why if someone wants to do a research so this is a highly plausible research it has an immense economic value political value social value so your understanding i'll show you how these things are simply hidden in a financial statements um look at this 
Jesus. And this one, I think I just downloaded it. Okay. So, do you see the screen now? Hello, do you yes, see sir. my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is the, the latest um, interim financial statements of Mel uh, Starco as of 30th September 2021, the last quarterly financial statements. And the list of la uh, the, the largest 20 shareholders, in fact, uh, la uh, the 25 shareholders have been given. If you read out the list, first one, right, who owns 43%, almost 43% is a limited liability company, another fictitious entity, right? And second one, Lanka Milk Foods, that is also a company, 42 plus 13, 55%, right? We already 55% is owned by two companies. If you want to ident I mean, identify who owns these two companies, you need to find out the shareholders, individuals. My argument is to great extent, these ultimate shareholders, individual shareholders would be handful, very few, two, three, not many. They, so maybe the same shareholder holds shares in milk foods and, um, uh, mill Ford exports and likewise. So it, it's a challenge for you uh, if you want to do a very good research. Actually, I have just contemplated of doing a research, but due to this schedule and my other uh, engagement, social and political engagement, uh, now I have been constrained to do this. So now you, you can understand. If you just go again, in terms of individuals, one Yasin, right? 12%. Then again, um, another fund. So we do not know the individual would be one, five, or several individuals. Again, Yasin, Yasin, and Yasin, right? And here, Hari Jayavardhana. So as an individual, Hari Jayavardhana owns how much? 1.2%. What is your impression, like um, reaction to this? Um, basically, many have heard about Harry Jayavardhan. So he is a business goon and um, he has lots of influences and he owns lots of business. Oh, if you read this, you may want, oh, he owns only 1.2%. So innocent person, like he gets only 1.2% of all those benefits and he doesn't have big say in the company. So, the, uh, so the, but that's not the reality. So as an individual shareholder, in the list, he owns only this. But if you check Lanka Milk Foods and Milk Ford Exports, of course, again, this uh, Yasin, Yasin family and Jayavardhana uh, would, I mean, are likely to be the major shareholders. This is some way of not um, deceiving, but uh, um, giving you misleading information. It's your task and responsibility to go to the ultimate analysis. If you do not do the analysis in such a manner, you would be deceived by yourself. You come to a different conclusion. And this one, um, and again, there is a private limited. So negligible amount. So just you see, once it comes down to five, six, seven major shareholders, rest is negligible even within largest 25 shareholders who holds the most are uh, only top five six shareholders not the rest so they are the people who can uh, influence all the operations of not only this company but also all the companies so that is one of the objectives of analyzing these financial statements not simply looking at reading the information and presenting them hmm? 
in, in your presentation. So just for your improvement, um, what you have to do, you have to add that analytical part. So that was missing. And mainly it was descriptive and uh, um, reporting uh, of information. If, if someone who like, that, that's also one task, reporting and uh, presenting information um, to others. But when we think of the depth and the objective of our course, uh, we need to go a little bit beyond from the basic presentation of information or reporting of information, because we are not talking about reporting. We are talking about analysis. So analysis cannot be done without questioning why and how, why and how. So that that part is missing, so you have to improve, it, okay? And even look at other small, even insignificant shareholders. So many are uh, disclosed here, are companies except um, um, these uh, members within the family. Maybe another Jayavardhana would be relative or son. We do not know. So as a percentage, it is insignificant. Large number of shares, millions of shares. And this is a limited liability. This is also another company. You see, growth trust um, fund and BOC, uh, maybe provident fund, whatever. DFCC bank, likewise. You, you can check all. And now you, you should understand the uh, gravity of this particular issue. Uh, without identifying and summarizing, analyzing how individuals amaze wealth, um, this wealth amaze, ama amazing um, strategy and actions would continue forever. But the, as a whole, like the entire world would not be able to um, uh, create a society that's good for everyone. Nowadays, there are lots of issues even around the world. If you read about the stories about um, uh, um, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, hmm? so even Jack Ma in China, Jack Ma actually has been um, in a way, not only Jack Ma and other private entrepreneurs in China has been really booked by the Chinese government in a very uh, wise, strategically, tactical manner uh, through a particular program called Common Prosperity. Common Prosperity. Uh, there is no escape now. The uh, Chinese government has realized that if uh, it let uh, individuals and individual companies carry out their operations as they wish in uh, uh, that's, uh, that particular race of um, maximizing individual wealth without uh, respecting other rules, like um, uh, without having any constraints uh, freely, that might lead to uh, lots of issues, even entire society uh, would be distracted and many uh, social issues may be created. In a way, no matter whether we like the political system that China has or not, any criticism about, kind of dictatorship type um, uh, political regime is there, but rightly it has identified it and arrested this particular issue with this common, uh, the program called Common Prosperity. You, you better read that if you really want to learn. But when it comes to, turns to the other side, the Western countries, Europe, uh, Elon Musk, uh, Jeff, um, uh, uh, the Bezos and other billionaires, wealthy people, maybe, 10, 50, 100. So they uh, try uh, maximize their wealth. Uh, even there is no limit. So down now, number one, or uh, the richest um, the person in the world is the Elon Musk. He has um, um, 200 billions of uh, US dollars. Uh, he is in a project of um, traveling to Mars. Um, but the government, US government is also trying to take some wealth from him, uh, but he has opposed saying that, no, let me do these things. I will do research uh, that and this, that's good for mankind. So many arguments, debates uh, can be seen in Western countries as well, right? 
Uh, however, however, some institution, some organizations, mainly not individuals, organizations, institutions, uh, including political parties, social organizations, movements around the world now at least have realized that the uh, uh, the policy of allowing individuals to maximize their own wealth without having any limitations would create so many uh, problems uh, to the society in the near future that may end with another world war or uh, um, any disaster or a social calamity um, or wars uh, between countries, we do not know that may lead. So as a result, kind of resistance has proposed um, that well, the people should contribute more and uh, to arrest these economic uh, problems. Whereby, recently concluded G20 summit, G20 summit passed a resolution unanimously saying that no company should be allowed in this world to have uh, tax benefits enjoyment less than 14%. So in a way they imposed a minimum tax threshold tax percentage of 14% to all those companies operate in different continents, especially this is so <laughs> applicable for multinational companies. So where they enjoy double tax uh, treaties, benefits and all those things. So that's interesting to read um, about this G20 proposal about the global minimum tax rate of 14%. So that is how you, you can um, be learn more. Uh, but, but I'm just telling you as far as this financial statement subject is concerned, of course you are, uh, you need not to be worried about all those things and uh, uh, so you can, but like being a responsible citizen in this world, I think it's always better to be in touch with what's happening in at least main social and political and economic spheres. Um, again, um, why are related party transactions important already we discussed. Does the group need this many number of companies? Of course, already just explain you to some extent. Um, of course not, but there is a kind of economic argument um, where to give more leverage for managers, CEOs to carry out their uh, different businesses which are distinct from each other with more autonomy and more freedom, then of course you can think of creating different companies. But again, again, uh, counter argument can be brought. So you would have only one company if you want to have freedom for your managers to carry out different types of uh, segment businesses, you would have a different branch segment and all those things. And there is no point. So, but you know, always, when you create more and more limited liability companies within the same umbrella, with the same capital, always the shareholders, the owners who invest their money in businesses would limit their risk. They manage their risk. Why? The money, whenever you invest your money in uh, different, different companies, so if something goes wrong quickly, you can transfer that wealth to another company and let the other company die because that company, is, uh, company has only a limited liability. You got it? Suppose that you have two companies. So you have a wealth of $100 million. You form two companies by investing $50 million each. Due to some other reason, uh, the second company is going to create a, a lot, lots of problems. Although it has uh, generated huge wealth they, they, and the government is trying to take lots of taxes. So what you can do, you can transfer all those wealth through related party transaction to the other company and let that company have a loss in this year, next year, likewise, years and years. 
uh, within a reasonable time period, company would die, even leaving some liabilities to the government banks as loans and other obligations. Then you need not to pay, even though you are the same owner. You are uh, really uh, relieved from that liability. You are a different uh, person from uh, that of that company. Now you, you can understand this, of course. So they are actually what, the main reason why the companies or individuals tend to um, open so many different companies, not purely because of um, increasing the efficiency, economic efficiency and reducing the cost of production we are by creating more value to the society and do good things to the society instead uh, create or maximize their own utility through different means. So that, that's the reality. So you, you, you can do a research on that. And in other, already we talked about all those things, who owns these companies, implications. Um, is there, okay, just for our knowledge, does Melta, uh, sorry, uh, Melta Corp has a committee on related party transactions? Hello? Lakshi? Yes, sir. Yeah, does the company have a related party committee? or under the board? Uh, Not sure. Even I didn't yes, know. sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can check. Yeah, yeah. Does it have or you do not have, you don't, do not know? No, sir, have. Okay. So then if it um, has a related um, party transaction committee, a committee on related party transaction, so it's the sole responsibility of that particular committee to give, of course, these committees can be influenced. That, now you can understand that this kind of committee should comprise of, I mean, purely independent directors. I think that that's the case. You, you better check uh, if you have the names of the directors and status of the directors, you better check whether they are independent um, and non-executive directors. If they are not, not independent, of course, there is no point of having a related party transaction committee. Why? That committee can always interpret the related party transaction in such a manner, in the rosy manner, saying that, no, it does not harm anybody. So one of the major tasks of this committee is to analyze these related party transactions and give their comments and observations about these related party transaction, mainly in these lines. Number one is to uh, mention whether these related party transactions have taken place in an arm's length mode, whether those transactions are arm's length transactions. That means they have taken place on commercial terms and conditions, normal commercial terms and conditions. If that's the case, so likelihood of transferring wealth from one company to, company to another is less. So now you, 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 you can understand the importance of having a related party transaction committee as a part of good governance, good corporate governance. So if they are bribe or influence, in that, so in Sri Lanka, you may have so many apparatus institutions, uh, apparently with the flavor of independence, but they are not really independent. They also become part and parcel of uh, this cult, like uh, black culprit, like highly corrupt um, uh, networks. So anyway, I just told you this information to understand. So it's the responsibility of this particular committee. So there, there are for in your analysis, you could have gone and analyzed and just told us, so, and, I mean, how and under what conditions the committee has um, explained us whether they are arm's length, whether they have taken place on commercial terms and conditions. Um, then what else? 
Another important area is right. So finally, if these kind of things are there, on one hand, big and larger shareholders can evade taxation. And on the other hand, because of related party transactions, if they were not done on commercial basis and on uh, arms and transactions, again, there is a deprivement of um, minority shareholders. Minority shareholders, another implication. When we talk about related party transaction, we need to talk about the um, implications on minority shareholders. How have they been affected? You need to check. It. Mm -hmm. And in the related party transactions disclosed within Melstar Corp Group um, are mainly loans and interests uh, in addition to dividends. Mm -hmm. So the loans and interests, so some information was there about the interest rates and terms and conditions at which the loans have been granted. Um, so when, when they take market rates and plus something, it appears, it implies that yes, they are they, they have been done on commercial terms and condition. But we need to have a careful and detailed analysis. So instead of just simply transferring wealth or the money from one company to another in terms of loans, didn't that company um, have some other opportunities of making use of that money in a productive manner or invest them in um, operating assets within the company or to start up another business or uh, um, expand its businesses uh, whereby creating more value rather than simply lending. Unless your business is lending, that is accepted. If your business is not that, uh, I mean, not lending, uh, and if you rely, focus more on lending among companies, so that again opens those for uh, related party, I mean, the transfer of wealth through related party transactions. Okay, um, all right, with that, um, I would like to conclude. Uh, now we can move on to the second presentation. If you have any question, you can ask. Uh, 